This video is to help you work on your summary this weekend for the article that I gave you. It's uh, an interesting article, not that easy to summarize because it covers quite a few uh, subtopics, but there is a main idea here about what we know about the Gen Z, Generation Z so far. So they're trying to make, uh, give us general ideas, especially by comparing the generation to previous generations. So Generation C is everybody who was born after 1996. So these people are up to 23 years old right now. And normally we expect the younger group, the teenagers, to have different ideas and values than older people who tend to be more traditional. Especially if we go way back to what they call the silent generation where these people, the youngest group here is 75. These are the people that lived uh, during World, World War II, a very old group. Now the first thing we look for in a when we're trying to summarize is titles because titles are supposed to give us main concepts but we don't see very many titles in this article so you really have to do quite a bit of reading yourself we do see charts and some of the charts are connected to main ideas and some of them are not so you have to be careful here I think this title is, uh, is important. I would mention that in my summary. This graph might not be very important unless you can find one major trend here. A trend is a, important, a general change that's happening. Then we have one more little uh, title that is uh, very useful. Then we have another chart with a lot of small details that might not be useful uh, for you. So when you're reading, I recommend read the first sentence and try to decide, does it seem like a topic sentence with the main idea? If it does, it might you might be able to use it in the summary, but I normally I don't want you to quote it directly word for word 100 percent most of the time you should be changing some of the words for example to make it shorter a lot of these topic sentences can be shortened this one here is quite long if, if it's a topic sent I think it is because it's right after this topic sentence we've got lots of details that we don't have enough room for in the summary to include all of them but maybe there's one important detail that you'll be able to put right into the topic sentence when you rewrite it for the summary so another title another chart and this chart looks like it's a very simple pattern a simple trend and uh, by the way when you see statistics that are nearly the same then um, you can just say they're very similar you don't have to report all of these little numbers uh, at all in a summary um, and a lot of times here we do see very similar statistics between Generation Z the young teenagers in between the Millennials who are now mostly in their 20s and 30s the, they're young adults but they're not teenagers anymore so the top the titles are helpful the charts are a little bit helpful but there isn't any really good summary that I found in the article itself so you're going to have to be careful about uh, taking things directly out of here and anything that gets into the small details 
is probably not, doesn't belong in the summary. Um, the one similar, the one pattern I did see in this article was they are often comparing Gen Z to the millennials, the adults that are 10 and 20 years older than them. I think it's worth having something in the summary that compares Generation Z to the Millennials, um, and but you can't really get into a lot of details about that to have a summary. You only have 300 words. You're submitting it inside of an assignment window where I will be using a Blackboard feature to check how much of your language is coming from the internet and if I see that most of your language is you are taking sentences just you're taking the first sentence and just putting them all together to make your summary you will get a low score because you need to be simplifying it shortening it modifying it to make it work together more logically and keeping it to 300 words. If you took all the first sentences, I don't know how many words that would be, probably more than 300 words, but I'm not sure. So, like I said, there might be one or two little details that you think are really important and especially if they're highlighting something special about Generation Z. But look for ways to put similar facts together in your summary. That will save a lot of space. You do not have to, you, you can skip things that seem to be less important. We're looking for the big general idea. So I said, for example, if you were a very good reader and you studied this carefully and then you walked away, what would still be in your head after 30 minutes or one hour? Your brain would find a way to simplify the, the basic message here. Your brain would not remember all these little numbers. What your brain would do is would, it would start to translate it. It would say, well, 7%, that's like hardly any. 22%, that's kind of like a, a few. Um, your brain would start to put it into simpler categories. 40%, um, almost half. 68%, most of them. Uh, more than half of them. That's how your brain organizes information. It doesn't keep all these little numbers in this case. So look for words that allow you to make what we call generalizations. What is the general pattern here? Not all the little tiny details that those don't belong in the summary. It's, it would be okay to identify Generation Z right in the beginning. I think that's important, defining who Generation Z is. But you're not going to be able to identify all of these other generations of older people because that would just take up too much time. This comes from a research organization, so it's written in a very fairly academic way. It's not designed to, to be exciting or fun, but there are certain little signs here that they're trying to get your attention and make it more interesting. So you could say this first paragraph is kind of like a big hook in a way. It's trying to get your attention by saying that this young generation will be eligible. To, many of them will start voting this year. This might be their first time that they can vote for a president, for example. Now, the reason this is here, this is not a summary. This is just trying to say, we need to learn about Generation Z. 
Uh, so it's sort of like a hook. It's not bringing you the main ideas. It's trying to get your attention. Political clout means political influence. I know there's some difficult vocabulary here, so I used a special website called ReWordify, and that gave definitions of some of the less common words. This is not truly advanced academic vocabulary. Um, these words are known to most Americans, but I wanted to make sure that you had a, um, a way to quickly check the meanings for these words. So I put them all together here. Here's the text on one side, and here are definitions of some of the uh, less common, possibly difficult words, but really not very difficult um, in a college uh, way. This whole text really is written maybe at about the, the level of a 11th grader or 10th grader in the United States. It's not truly a college level text um, in a traditional sense. But I recommend uh, learning some of these words as we go along, uh, and it could help you understand some of the details that are in the text. On the reading test last week, I asked you to try to paraphrase. And now I'm asking you to summarize. These are main research skills. Paraphrase means take the same information, but say it in different words, usually in simpler words that are reflect your level of language. Usually when you paraphrase, you the length of the text is the same. You're not making it shorter. But when you summarize, you are making it shorter. You're taking out everything that is not really crucially important so you can focus on the main ideas. So summarize, you don't have to paraphrase a lot, but just by eliminating some words, some less important words, you will make long sentences shorter and in your summary. So you'll save space and co try to cover all only the big main ideas, not all the little small ideas about the text. Sometimes you, we do these together. We paraphrase and summarize together because when we change the language and the grammar and the vocabulary, in order to make it shorter, that is a kind of paraphrasing. If you summarize just by taking exactly the same words and just pushing them together in a paragraph, that is not paraphrasing and it usually does not work very well. So most of the time we have to do a little bit of both together here in a good research uh, article.